very much alive and well and kicking. Tonight, I am truly Grenadian, and that means I'm entitled to be, how many, 18 minutes and 16 seconds late. Yeah, I am Grenadian, yeah. And I didn't have a note signed by my mom either. No excuses. It's Easter Monday. I'm entitled to be late. There you go, pilgrims. Hi, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I'm sorry. Quite frankly, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm only kidding. I, I am sorry to be late. But eh, these things do happen. These things do happen. And uh, the fact is... When all is said and done, I made it. I made it. So I'm, uh, I'm going to be very thankful to my good God. It's come through again. And uh, thankful that you guys have been able to make it tonight. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm, I'm just uh, playing around here with my little uh, prompter. So just give me half a second. I'm going to uh, make these letters a little bit smaller. You know, I'm getting to the point where pretty darn soon I'm going to have to be wearing glasses. Not only glasses, but looks like pretty soon I'm going to have to get find somewhere to keep these earplugs. You notice how many times every hour I have to keep putting these in? Yeah, well, I guess it all goes with old age. See, there we go. <laughs> there we go. If you thought I was kidding, so I have to sit here like this tonight. Huh? Sort of? Somewhat? Bell Grimms, since uh, we're running a little bit behind time, let's, uh, let's get right down to brass tacks. Tonight, we are going to uh, take a look, to begin, at uh, a press conference which took place... Uh, this afternoon, and actually not too long ago, it, uh, it started at 4, I think it went until about 5.30. Yeah, the Prime Minister, the Health Minister, and uh, the Commissioner of Police, they had a lot to say this, uh, this evening. Yeah, they had a lot to say this evening. And for those of you who may have been preoccupied otherwise, we're going to run that by you tonight. There's a lot going on this week, a lot of changes. And uh, it looks like the restrictions that have been imposed upon us as a result of the state of emergency looks like there could be an end in sight, at least a little easing of things in sight. So that's why I wanted to show this to you. I've got to bring you some good news despite the fact that it was late. So that's one of the things we're going to look at. Then <laughs> some more depressing news. The, uh, the governor of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, our very own Timothy Antoine, announced, has announced that it seems almost certain that there is a recession looming. He describes it as a perfect storm. Yeah? Yeah. You'll hear what Timothy has to say. Then, <laughs> I'm sure this is going to provide a lot of you with a lot of reassurance. We do have friends. Yeah. And guess what? Grenada has received a batch of medical supplies from China. Yeah. They have sent some help to good old Grenada. Not only they, but Venezuela is also lending to Grenada's fight against COVID-19. So see, yeah. Okay, I'll tell you what. Let's uh, start by taking a look at what the Prime Minister had to say this afternoon. We're not gonna run the entire hour and a half press, press briefing for you. We're just going to run the statements made by the Prime Minister because I think he uh, he summed it up pretty well. Here goes. Thank you, Phil. Good afternoon, fellow Grenadians, Carl Quinians, Piedmont Nicans, all. 
I take this opportunity to wish all of you a happy Easter. I know there's certainly a different Easter than any one of you, no matter how young or old you are. This is certainly a unique Easter. So although we could not engage in our traditional norms this Easter weekend, I trust that you took time to appreciate the true meaning of Easter and the significance of the res resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now more than ever, we get to choose light over darkness and life over death. We are in the final week of the mandatory 24 hours curfew. This has been a steep learning curve for all of us along the way as we face this unprecedented global crisis. We ask all of you, sisters and brothers, for your continued patience in this time of restricted movements as we must allow the healthcare professionals to pursue broad-based testing in keeping with scientific modeling, to ascertain the degree to which COVID-19 is present in our country. It is simply to ensure that all persons who are potentially exposed to the virus are tested. The Ministry of Health, as the Press Secretary indicate, indicated, will give further elaboration on this. But based on the results of all the testing we've done so far, there is still no indication there has been any widespread community, any community spread of the virus. This, sisters and brothers, you would agree, is excellent news. But we cannot afford to let our God down just yet. We must maintain the vigilance we have exhibited in recent weeks. And you, the citizens, should continue to practice physical and social distancing and the recommended cough and sneezing techniques. Given our overall status as it relates to the presence of COVID-19 in our country, we are seriously considering further easement of the curfew as of next week. That is after Monday, April 12th. Including the allocation of additional shopping days and provisions for farmers and fishermen who, as you know, are critical in the food supply chain. An announcement on that will be made when we have fully examined the health implications as outlined by our medical experts. Of course, the further easing of our lockdown measures will be highly contingent on your ability as citizens to comply with the regulations put in place to safeguard our public health. In the meantime, however, we continue to make operational changes as they become necessary to ensure that all our citizens are able to have basic supplies for daily living. This week, we have allocated, therefore, 
three days for shopping Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. This, we hope, will ease the congestion we are still seeing at major supermarkets. And we clearly are concerned about that aspect because the intention is to protect our citizens and, and to prevent any community spread. And therefore, any initiative that is taken that keeps people bundled up in large groups certainly is, goes against the intended purpose of all the regulations that we have put in place. Let me say here, therefore, that your actions, particularly in shopping days, will play a significant role in helping to curb any potential spread of the virus in our community. In preparing for the shopping days, suppliers will begin distributing goods across the island from tomorrow, Tuesday 14th, until Thursday the 16th. Therefore, all village shops, grocery stores, and supermarkets will have an opportunity over the next few days to adequately replenish the stock to better serve you, the people. There is no need for panic buying and no need for large crowds and long lines. There is sufficient time and supply for everyone to secure basic supplies for the families. On the same days that shops and supermarkets are open, farmers and fishermen are also allowed to market their produce, and I believe that's a significant change from what we had before. We have heard the cry of both sides of that equation. The Sister Isles of Caracom P.T. Matnik will have a shopping day tomorrow, Tuesday 14, from th for, and from Thursday this week, all the islands, all parts of our island Grenada Car Company Martinic will have the same shopping days going forward. I think it's important to me to make the point to our brothers and sisters in PT Martinic, and I received a report only just a few minutes ago from the Minister of Health who had just visited PT Martinic and indicated that um, well, the people of P.D. Martinic, while they do have some inconveniences like every part of this country, and no one has indicated that they have any serious starvation problems in P.D. Martinic, and therefore there is no need for anyone to ask anybody to break the fundamental norms that we have established as a country to protect all the citizens of of P.T. Martinic, and I therefore want to congratulate the people of P.T. Martinic and Karaku for listening to the heirs of the government and no one else. By now, most of you should have heard my announcement of the two banking days that will be provided on Thursday or Friday this week from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. I want to commend the Bankers Association for their ready agreement to partner with government in ensuring that these services are made available to the public. Because on short notice, I called a meeting with the Bankers Association and they readily agreed to do what is necessary within the protocol established to provide the services to length and breadth of our country to, and to, to help is the problem that people are noticing as far as the lack of availability of cash. I think it's also important to note that the bankers have agreed to look at very soon, hopefully next week, to open our every day. The, the specific time of operation in, on those days going forward will be announced. So I expect they have, in fact, indicated this, but it has to be worked out 
with our health ministry and, and the, the commission of police and others. All other businesses providing financial services to the population, including credit unions, MoneyGram, and Western Union, are permitted to operate during the same hours as banks on Thursdays and, and Thursday and Friday of this week. Additionally, all gas stations will be open from 6 a.m. to noon on Wednesday and Friday this week. But essential workers and employees of other businesses will be allowed to operate this week. For all services at grocery stores, supermarkets, and financial institutions, Government kindly encourages owners and operators to make special provision for essential and frontline workers. We continue to be exceedingly grateful for, the, for the, these workers' sacrifices, especially our healthcare professionals and our Royal Grenada Police Force. Sisters and brothers, in all that you do, I urge you to always remember that social and physical distancing is key. Do not endanger your health by standing too close to any other person. And do not be afraid to request the same of persons who are in your presence. Also, be sure to wear a mask or some other facial covering whenever you are out in public. I'm here today with one. This is to protect all of us, to protect our country. And the final point I, I need to raise to indicate Tuesday this week, the Finance Committee of Parliament will be meeting via the, the technology that we use, that's the virtual meeting of, of that cabinet has been having for the last few weeks. And that is primarily to discuss, to, sorry, to pass, which is all, all the laws of the land indicate the fiscal stimulus package that we, in fact, indicated. Um, it also have to, we have to look at the appropriation any time you are supposed to be spending additional monies other than that was allocated during a budget period, then you must go to finance committee for, for that um, support, the legal support to proceed to spend and to expect to be paying those workers that we promised by late next week or the f early the following week. Um, we so must pass this. We also would have to look at some other um, laws that give effect to these payments that must be done at the Parliament, and the Parliament will therefore meet on Friday of next week. It's important to note and I heard some comments being made by some uninformed persons that we may be breaking some rule by not going to Parliament. This government always stood by fundamental rules, and we have not broken any rules. Those who read and read properly would know that we are following every aspect that we have to. Any government spending outside of what is stated on on the, the budget period um, that was identified from vote to vote. That could be done by the contingency fund which was established by Parliament. And contingency is what it means. In case you have emergencies, you can spend. It's the only reason we have to go to Parliament is because the amount we have to spend for the next three months 
in addition to what the budget has, is more than what the contingency fund has in it right now. That's the fundamental reason we have to go. So we will be doing so on Friday, and then also we'll have the official emergency legislation passed in Parliament, so it would not be having to, the governor then not have to um, de declare this every week, um, every two weeks, whatever the situation arises. So there will be a parliamentary approval for the Emergency Powers Legislation Act, which of course runs out in three, three months. So it will be a maximum of three months if we have to do it. Um, God forbid, we hope we won't have to do it. So, friends, I look forward to your comments and questions. I know the Minister of Health will be giving an update on the health situation as we see it in our country. But just want to th thank you again for the cooperation that we noticed and uh, the understanding that you've had that I've seen as I drive around the country an unmarked vehicle, some of you don't know that I'm passing, I see there is general acceptance of what we are doing throughout the length and breadth of the country. So I want to thank you for this. All right. So there you have it. That was uh, Prime Minister Mitchell as he addressed the media a little after 4 o'clock this afternoon. Now, there's a comment here from John on uh, social media. John says, I'm trying to find out what happens if your visa runs out during this lockdown. If the immigration office is open, will the post office be open to pay for an extension? John, I'm not able to run the entire press conference tonight. However, I think that was addressed this afternoon. The question was asked by, I think it was Junior George from right along out in New York. Um, you know, what happened, there, there are a lot, a lot of Grenadians who went up to the United States and um, their visas will, if they haven't already, be running out because they're just not able to get back into Grenada, right? And the Prime Minister is acutely aware of that and he explained that that is something that they are seriously taking into consideration, okay? So don't, don't panic, John. We're not gonna kick you off carrier coup, okay? Eh, if we do, maybe only as far as pity might make, all right? Chill, chill. That's being taken care of. Okay, pilgrims, that's now, let's see, 20 minutes away from nine o'clock. Again, sorry for the late start, but let's take a little break. And then we'll come back and hear what the governor of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, Timothy Antoine, has to say. He paints an ominous picture. COVID-19 spreads from person to person through the droplets that are produced when someone coughs or sneezes, which makes it easy to spread between people in close contact. Now let's get prepared to stay healthy. To reduce your chance of catching or spreading COVID-19, practice these simple everyday preventative measures. Droplets can also land on surfaces, so ensure that you wash your hands frequently for a minimum of 20 seconds or sing the happy birthday song twice. Avoid touching your face, especially your eyes, nose and mouth. If soap and water are not readily available, Use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer with an alcohol content between 60 and 90%. 70% is ideal. When you cough or sneeze, cover your nose and mouth with a flexed elbow or a tissue. Dispose of the tissue immediately and then wash your hands. If you notice someone has a fever and cough, or other symptoms of respiratory illness, avoid close contact when possible. Let's all do our part to ensure that each and every Grenadian remains healthy. Our health is our collective responsibility.
People dying from the COVID and that is sad But a lot of all your head too damn blasted hard The government asked me to stay inside But it's like some of us don't want to comply Heaven's first law is obedience So I'm asking everyone to have some patience Practice proper hygiene, I begging you And don't forget, the Almighty will see us through Stay at home Don't go wrong Holy faith Remember the home remedies is the best Ginger, saffron, garlic Nothing could contest Vitamin C and iron intake Yeah, we mashing she up Before she could quick Corona, you come to kill and destroy Take away we freedom And still we joy But let us not complain We must see this true My people, I'm singing to you Stay at home Don't go wrong Yeah, yeah well, ladies and gent from near and far, I'm representing Sweet Grenada. Well, everybody know I'm the music man, but Extempo is not where King Man belong. But since Brian London give me the call to trip in in this Extempo back and all, my name is Gypsy, but I'm a writer, so I need some time to put my thoughts together. Hey! Ba la 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 ba da ba da ba da ba da la 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 Santifman Well never in my life I ever thought A virus could have shut down the place like that Well I'm a survivor of GBS And if this virus take me well that is stress So I lock down myself in my studio I write in reggae and calypso So when corona gone It's my time to rain A jambo would be back on the road again Oh God Hey! Well, I want you to listen me carefully Eight days ago I lost my daddy And although it wasn't Corona do that But it really breaks my family's heart Cause my daddy told me personally in Grenada, Palm Rose, he want to bury Now the plane won't fly And the boat can't reach So I still cannot grant my daddy his wish Oh my God Corona bad, bad, bad Oh my God, I say Santi Manite Pure Grenada the spice of the Caribbean endeavors to be a positive source of inspiration for those dreaming of travel. We invite you to dream with us wherever you are. Dream about sipping a fresh fruity cocktail and sticking your toes into the warm white sand at Grand Anse Beach. Dream about snorkeling at the world's first underwater sculpture park at Molinaire. And dream about taking a dip under the cool, cascading Concord waterfall. We are Grenada, dreaming of welcoming you back to our shores. With love, from Grenada, Kariaku and Petite Martinique. Alrighty folks, uh, yesterday is now 12 minutes away from the hour. John, John, chill, John. John says here, um, in response to what I said a little while ago, John said, that was a visa issued in America. My concern is here on Kariaku for a UK citizen. John, I would have, 
I admit, this is an assumption on my part, but I would assume that if they're going to make arrangements with the U.S. government, okay, to be tolerant of Grenadians whose uh, visas expire during this very, very difficult time, the government here would do the same for a UK citizen. If it's going to make you feel any better, go to gov.gd, I repeat, gov.gd, and you'll be able to listen to the whole media conference this afternoon, okay? Um, the Prime Minister himself explained the scenario there. Check it out. And he says here, I'll go and live on White Island. That's privately owned. <laughs> you know, John, that's an island I've never been to. I've been to pretty much all the islands around Karakou, but that's an island I have never been to. I understand it's a pretty little island, but as far as I'm concerned, the love of my life is Sandy Island. That's where I hang out. Okay, now folks, Timothy Antoine. Governor of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank. I want you to spend the next few minutes listening to, uh, you know, his predictions, his advice um, um, for us in the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union as to where we stand with this whole COVID issue. He took about 15 minutes to explain this. I thought you need to see it. Fellow citizens and residents of the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union, I address you at a time of great adversity and anxiety for our region and our world. This moment is like no other. We have to go back more than 100 years to the 1918 Spanish flu to begin to comprehend the scale and scope of the COVID-19 pandemic. Thankfully, there will be far fewer fatalities on this occasion. However, unlike 1918, our world is far more interconnected. For that reason, this is the first time in human history that all inhabitants of our planet, 7.7 .7 billion and counting, are at risk to the same disease. It is truly a global pandemic. Indeed, the shutdowns or lockdowns now in force are without precedent. Needless to say, the pandemic has now morphed into a global economic downturn and an almost certain recession, a perfect storm. Even at this relatively early stage, it is already clear that our world has been changed forever. The COVID-19 pandemic will eventually be in our rearview mirror, but its scars and lessons will linger long. That said, it has, as every crisis does, presented opportunities to enhance the way we live, work, and conduct our daily lives. We can seize them if we proceed with a growth mindset. At this juncture, the International Monetary Fund is projecting that the global economy will contract in 2020 on a magnitude same as or larger than the global financial crisis. The extent of the economic impact depends on the length and severity of the pandemic, and those are still unknowns at this time. The ECCB has run several scenarios for the ECCU. Based on two such scenarios, Economic activity in the ECCU is projected to contract between 5% and 7% in 2020, accompanied by a sharp rise in unemployment. Now keep in mind that prior to this pandemic, economic growth in the ECCU was projected at 3.3%. Member governments have fashioned and announced fiscal stimulus, or what may be more aptly described as care and relief packages to help cushion the effect of the pandemic on individuals and businesses. 
This is an exceptionally challenging time for our governments because revenues have plummeted. Since the outbreak of COVID-19, the ECCB has been focused on two priorities, protecting our staff and serving our region. Here are some of the actions we have taken to date. First, provided financial support to member governments through a $4 million grant, $500,000 for each member country from the Fiscal Reserve Tranche 2. Second, reached an agreement with the ECCU Bankers Association on a loan deferral program for customers for up to six months. A waiver of late fees and charges is applicable to eligible customers during that period. Third, created a page on the ECCB's website to provide information on the bank's COVID-19 response. Fourth, discuss a loan deferral program for customers with credit unions, the Caribbean Confederation of Credit Unions and national regulators. Fifth, increase government share of the credit allocation budget, thereby increasing the central bank's lending capacity to member governments. Sixth, instituted bank-wide telecommuting, working from home. And seventh, reduce the discount rate to 2% from 6.5%. This is a rate at which the central bank lends to governments and banks. Our central bank has also convened meetings with ministries of finance to support the development of national and regional responses to COVID-19. The ECCB is working very closely with the OECS Commission on procurement of critical supplies, assessments, resource mobilization, and coordination. The ECCB is also actively engaged with the IMF and the World Bank Group on assistance for our member countries. Our central bank continues to provide currency to financial institutions in every member country to ensure, for example, ATMs, ABMs can be restocked as needed. In respect of payments, our central bank continues to play a vital role in ensuring payments are made on time, including payroll and pension payments for governments and social security systems that use the electronic funds transfer platform. The foregoing actions have been taken to ensure that the ECCB effectively serves our region at this time. The EC dollar remains very strong. As of Friday, April 3rd, 2020, the backing ratio of our currency stood at 100.7%. This is great news because it means that the buffers built up over many years will serve our currency union extremely well in this difficult period. We anticipate that our central bank will need to extend credit to governments and banks. In the same way that the central bank has temporarily lowered the discount rate for governments and banks, the central bank is prepared, if necessary, to temporarily lower the backing ratio as credit is extended to governments and banks. That said, the backing of our currency will remain far above the legal requirement at all times. As you may know, the ECCB agreement requires a backing ratio of 60%. Thankfully, our central bank has very significant foreign reserves and the EC dollar will remain strong throughout this period. We note the call to the G20 by the heads of the IMF and the World Bank Group for a suspension of debt payments by the International Development Association countries to bilateral creditors for a period of time. This call is no different from the moratorium being provided by ECCU banks and credit unions to their customers. The principle is the same. Provide temporary relief to countries until they can resume meeting their obligations. The call of the heads of the Bretton Woods institutions is consistent with ECCB's advocacy in recent years for a disaster link clause to be inserted in the sovereign contracts of all small states. In a period of adversity, such as we now have, it helps if small countries can apply their much-needed liquidity to support rapid recovery before resuming their payments and to do so with the prior consent of their creditors. The regional government securities market is a critical aspect of the financial architecture in the ECCU. Last year, 
Member governments issued a record 65 securities on the RGSM, which has been in operation since November 2002. The RGSM is not only a source of financing for government operations through the issuance of Treasury bills, but also an opportunity for residents to earn higher rates of return compared to the traditional instruments such as bank deposits. At this time, investors can continue to use the RGSM. In economics, as in many disciplines, we work on the basis of assumptions. At this moment, our fight against this pandemic would be best served by relying on two basic assumptions. First, COVID-19 is no respecter of person, race, gender, class, wealth, position, or power. Second, anyone can get it, so everyone has it. If we proceed with these two basic assumptions, we will follow the protocols articulated by the health authorities, thereby protecting ourselves and each other. Here in the ECCU, all eight member countries have confirmed cases, and these numbers are rising. If you wish to track the progress of the virus in the ECCU, please visit our website or our Facebook page, where you will find a tracker with daily updates. We extend our profound condolences to all who have lost loved ones to this pandemic, both here at home and in the diaspora. The magnitude of this moment presents a compelling call for shared sacrifice and solidarity at all levels. Governments, opposition parties, labor unions, business, civil society, and citizens. As Caribbean brothers and sisters, we must stand with each other in firm solidarity as we fight a common enemy, COVID-19. At the global level, there is increasing recognition that this is a global problem that demands a global response. Of necessity, multilateral institutions must expand their toolkits, even create new instruments if they are to deliver an effective response. Fellow citizens and residents, social distancing does not mean spiritual distancing. On the contrary, now is the time for us to draw on our faith and practice spiritual closeness. Not surprisingly, the most trending verse on the Bible app U version is Philippians 4, 6, and 7, which exhorts, and I quote, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. End of quote. Our health systems, already suffering from pre-existing conditions such as weak primary health care, limited secondary care infrastructure and funding, and limited personnel, are now being severely tested. A rethink of our health care provision is urgently needed and must draw on critical lessons and resources from Cuba, such as its primary health care system and its abundant pool of trained doctors and nurses. We are grateful to Cuba for critical support now being rendered to our member countries. Once again, the issue of food security has come into sharp focus. Recall 2008 when food and fuel prices peaked and the regional conversation about food security ensued. Going forward, as part of building resilience, we must ensure our focus for enhancing our capacity to feed ourselves does not shift when this crisis recedes. It has happened before. It must not happen again. Even as we increasingly use electronic and digital channels to make payments, work from home, and ramp up online delivery of education to our children and students, it is elusively clear that our work on building out a digital economy with accompanying cyber resilience ought to be accelerated in the post-crisis period. And for tourism, our lifeblood, important plans must be laid now in preparation for the economic snapback. If you are bored at home, now would be a good time to set some short-term goals, such as 
lose some weight, read a book, or complete an online course. In finance and central banking, we use the term KYC, which means know your customer. In this era of social media and regrettably fake news, knowing your source by checking the source of your information is essential. Please remember, not everyone who possesses a smartphone is smart, and not everything you receive on social media is true. Rely only on credible sources, such as the WHO, PAHO, CAFA, ECCB, and of course, your health and government officials. We applaud all the essential workers who are now on the front line of this global war, including our doctors, nurses, and allied healthcare professionals, public utilities, media, security forces, and all other essential workers. We can help them to help us by adhering to the protocols such as boosting our immune systems, proper hand hygiene, physical distancing, and staying at home. We also recognize our farmers, fisher folk, and food distribution personnel. In conclusion, we urge everyone to fully consider the opportunities now presented to our region by this pandemic. The current challenges necessitate that our central bank adopt proactive and accommodative policies in the fulfillment of its mandates. To those ends, the ECCB stands shoulder to shoulder with member governments, commercial banks, and regional and international partners to help mitigate the health and socioeconomic impact of this pandemic on the ECCU. We are in a difficult season, but we are resilient. Let us neither doubt our collective strength nor our faith in our God. Remember, we are all in this fight together. Together, with the help of Almighty God, we shall overcome. I thank you. Thank you very much. To me, that's uh, Timothy Antoine, the governor of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, ECCB. Now, uh, I'm not at all surprised, but uh, it doesn't look like there's going to be a national report tonight. I just checked... Uh, the GIS's uh, Facebook page, Edode, they don't seem to have one. So we'll take a little break and then we'll come back and you'll see uh, where two countries have really rallied to Grenada in her time of need. Venezuela and China. Hang in there. Hey, Lynn. Hey, neighbor. Here's the bill I asked you to pay for me. How did you get your electricity bill to be so low? For one, we size our transformers just for what we need. And we unplug transformers, chargers and other devices when they're not in use. We also replace our light bulbs with LEDs. They burn less energy, right? Much less. I even replaced the seal on my refrigerator door to keep the cold air in. And Grenlec is always advising us not to open the fridge too often. That's right and my family washes and irons in bulk. With fuel prices changing all the time, how do you know if it is working? We pay attention to the usage history table. Over time, our average usage has decreased. So while Grenada can't control fuel prices, I can conserve energy and save money. Grenelec, energizing our Grenada. Juve chocolates, cocoa nibs, and cocoa balls from Diamond Estate Grenada are now available at Amazon.com, Amazon.ca, Amazon.co.uk, and GrenadaMarket.com. Try the sensational touch of nutmeg and a touch of ginger chocolates. 75% dark and rich, 100% pure cocoa, and their 60% dark and sweet chocolate bars today. Amazon Prime members enjoy free shipping on these orders in the USA, Canada, and Europe. GrenadaMarket.com when you can't come to the island, the products of the island will come to you.
Conveniently located in the Grand Anne Shopping Center, for over 40 years, Food Fair has provided quality service at affordable prices. Now, grocery shopping is made easier and more convenient from the Food Fair web store. Hey, babe. Hmm? Listen, uh, I need you to go down to Food Fair to get some groceries. All right, no problem. Right away. Thanks, babe. What are you doing? You're supposed to be going to Food Fair to get a grocery man. I am. But didn't you know you can order your groceries online from the Food Fair web store? Are you serious? Of course. All you have to do is just to log on to www.foodfair.gd with credit card in hand. And with an order of $100 or more, Food Fair Granans will deliver up to three miles away. And you don't even have to worry about your information, you know. The safety measures are excellent. So hold on. You just order online and Food Fair will deliver to you? Yep. Oh baby, better hurry up and order, man. I already did. They should be here any minute now. Enjoy easy online shopping anytime from your home or office from the Food Fair web store. Food Fair, where you can fill your baskets without emptying your pockets. Hey guys, it's Sabrina Francis encouraging you to stay inside and be COVID-19 smart. Do you hear Hey, it's Mr. Golden, and I'm urging you, the people of Grenada, Karakou, and Pity Martinic, to be COVID-19 smart. Stay home. All you here? This is Mandela Links, and I'm encouraging you to remain COVID-19 free. Keep yourself safe and your family by staying home. It's the best way to prevent this virus from spreading. Remember, please remain at your homes so that we all can live to see tomorrow when all this is over. God blessings and one love all the time. I see my man Wood. Yo, this is the Dan Man Lindy telling you to be COVID 19 safe. Stay home. <laughs> that way we could play a mass sooner rather than later. Everything will come to pass. You know the tingle. Mass must play. How you mean? Boom shakalaka. This is Lednek from the West Point family reminding all Grenadians to. Be COVID-19 smart. Stay home. It's just for a short time. We will be back on my feet soon. All right? Bless. Couple of, <laughs> couple of comments here. Don't know. Don't know. Don't know. Don't know. Don't know. Michael Alexander says, Hi, George. On a different note, I think the Ministry of Health went to carry a coup to do some damage control in response to your program with Sharon last Wednesday night. I don't know. I do know that the ministry, uh, yeah, the minister actually uh, was in Kariku and Pity Martinique today. I do know that. I do know that. <laughs> and um, Ryan says, uh, so Gigi has an impact. Good. And John says, on point with that. Yeah, I don't know, guys. I don't know. But Regardless of what, I'm happy to see that some attention is being paid, especially to Petty Martinique. Especially to Petty Martinique. Um, Isaac says, do have a good night, George Grant. Thanks for your service to humanity. Thank you very much, Isaac. Thanks to be there. Now, folks, let's, let's turn and take a look here. It's very interesting. Ironic as well. Uh, China has donated some medical supplies to uh, the government of Grenada. And there was quite a fanfare about that uh, just this past weekend. Check it out. Grenada's efforts to fight the dreaded COVID-19 were boosted by the Embassy of the People's Republic of China on Friday, April 10th, 2020, with an official handing over of medical equipment and supplies to the Ministry of Health. China has now donated medical supplies to 127 countries and four international organizations, even while that country still faces its own challenges. A brief handing over ceremony was held on Friday, April 10th, which was addressed by resident Chinese Ambassador Dr. Zhao Yongchen, Grenada's Minister for Foreign Affairs, the Honorable Peter David, and Minister for Health, the Honorable Nicholas Steele. Today, I am very Glad to be here to attend a hangover ceremony of the medical equipment and supply. This is the first 
donate supply by China to Grenada. Since 2005, China has, uh, have been supporting Grenada to develop an economic. We will continue to support Grenada to develop. And today, we send, uh, we donate some medical supply to Grenada and to support Grenada government to fight again COVID-19. As you know, since the outbreak of the coronavirus in Wuhan, the Chinese uh, Communist Party and Chinese government and the leadership President Xi Jinping we take most strict and most comprehensive and most scientific measures to prevent and control the kind of like the virus. So now we get a basic victory to control the virus. We not only protect Chinese life, but also to help all of the world to protect life of the people. We gave, a, we can do support to other countries. As of today, we donate medical supply to 127 countries and four international organizations. We show medical appearance to uh, countries and we send a uh, many uh, medical team to some countries to assist them this country to fight against the uh, COVID-19. So I am sure and uh, on a right Dr. Mitchell, Prime Minister of Grenada and the leadership, Grenadian people we win the victory of the uh, fight against COVID-19. So, let me say last, I wish all Grenadian people good health and safety. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. Ambassador, on behalf of the Ministry for Foreign Affairs, on behalf of the people, on behalf of all of us in Grenada, I want to thank you and through you, the people of China and President Xi Jinping for the donation of the supplies, much needed supplies in our country. What is most striking to me is that China itself has been facing some serious difficulties. But China, through very strong leadership of President Xi and through the discipline of the Chinese people, have been able to turn things around so that yesterday and two days ago we saw that Wuhan, the center of the epicenter of the epidemic in China, is now open. I want to say on behalf of our students who live in China, thank you for keeping them safe. You did advise us very early that the students should stay in Wuhan, and they stayed in Wuhan and they stayed inside. And today, we are happy to report that all of our students are safe. They are happy. I spoke to the ambassador a couple of days ago, and she said that the students are OK, and they are now back to the study. So I want to thank you for keeping our students in China safe on behalf of their parents, on behalf of the government, on behalf of all of us. I also want to thank you for this donation, which comes at a timely, in a timely manner. 
And I want to say to you, Ambassador, that the strength of the relationship between Grenada and China is such that it can never be broken, that we recommit ourselves to this relationship. We will do everything possible to ensure that relations not only widen, but deepen between our countries. And because of this donation today, I will say to you, Ambassador and Minister Steele and Minister of Health will speak to this, that we feel much safer and we feel, Ambassador, that learning the lessons of your experience in Wuhan and in China with COVID-19 is something that we have taken on board. And again, I just want to repeat, thank you, Ambassador. Thanks to the people of China. Thanks to President Xi. And to assure you that our Prime Minister, Prime Minister Mitchell, is, has expressed his gratitude already when we, in, when we notified him of this being the first shipment of many. And he also asked me to extend to you on his behalf gratitude to yourself and to your president on behalf of the prime minister, on behalf of the people, on behalf of all of the ministers for what China has done and has been such a reliable ally in the development of our country. So thank you again, Ambassador, and I look forward to further relations between our countries. Thank you. Minister David and Ambassador, uh, on behalf of the Ministry of Health, all of our frontline doctors and nurses who have joined in, in the battle against COVID-19, I want to thank you for this much needed protective care and other forms of assistance. I want to also take the opportunity to, to through you, to thank the government and people of the People's Republic of China for leading the way in this battle, for showing us what the proper model is to, to win this battle, for, for showing us that, that this battle can be won and that there is a light at the end of the tunnel, that it is possible in the success against COVID-19 to then open up within your own countries and have the circulation of your own people, but also to show us what true friendship is. And despite your challenges of recovering from the battle, one of the first things that you have done is to offer assistance to us in the form of aid for us to fight that battle. And I think that truly shows the nature of the government and people of the People's Republic of China and the true friendship that exists between Grenada and the People's Republic of China. Thank you, Ambassador. Thank you, sir. Yes, we can all take... Uh, yes, Ambassador. <laughs> the shipment of medical supplies and equipment includes protective face masks for medical use, personal protective equipment, infrared thermometers, medical protective goggles, disposable sterilized rubber surgical gloves, and surgical shoe covers. Yeah, do you guys like the elbow bounce? That was uh, about the donation which China has made to Grenada. In just a wee bit, we'll take a look at what uh, the Venezuelans have done. But there are a couple of comments there I want to share with you guys. Um, three comments, actually. Uh, John is saying here, a number of European governments have rejected Chinese-made equipment designed to combat the coronavirus outbreak. He goes on to say, Dutch officials said that the masks did not fit and that their filters did not work as intended, even though they had a quality certificate on them. John, um, yes, I heard about that, uh, the European governments, but hey, right here in the region, I understand that uh, St. Kitts Nevis has also refused to accept a, a donation from the Chinese. So, Ryan Jabon says, just asking, did any assistance come from America? <laughs> I was hoping you would tell us, Jabon. Okay, folks. Now, here's how the uh, Venezuelans have tripped in. On the heels of a donation of medical equipment and supplies by the Embassy of the People's Republic of China to Grenada, 
This country has received another donation, this time from the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. Government officials say it speaks to the excellent relationship between Grenada and Venezuela. A handing over ceremony at the Morris Bishop International Airport on Friday, April 10, 2020, was addressed by Health Minister the Honorable Nicholas Steele, Foreign Affairs Minister the Honorable Peter David, and resident Venezuelan Ambassador Jorge Veloz. Right now, we bring this support, the supply medica for the game, the Grenada game the, of COVID 19. This is support has been important for us. We are we, we very, very happy we can, we co, because we can help to Grenada people. It's like uh, say the national anthem, minister, minister, como say the national Grenada anthem, God bless our nation. Thank you. On behalf of the Prime Minister, the government, and people of Grenada, I would like to thank, through Ambassador, the people of Venezuela, the President of Venezuela, for this gift of supplies that will assist us in Grenada in dealing with the COVID-19. Grenada and Venezuela have a long history of relations. We know that Venezuela has been going through some difficult times. So for Venezuela to assist us in this time, when they themselves are facing difficulties, for us is an excellent tribute to the relationship between our two countries. So on behalf of the government, on behalf of the people, on behalf of the Prime Minister, I would like you to extend to President Maduro our deepest appreciation and gratitude for the help, not only now, but for all of the assistance given to Grenada by the Bolivarian Republic and the Bolivarian Revolution. I thank you. Ambassador, on behalf of the, the Ministry of Health and all of our frontline workers who are fighting the COVID-19 battle, we want to thank you for this assistance. This is one of our most challenging times as a nation, as it is for you one of your most challenging times and still out of our friendship and our brotherly and fraternal love you have found a way and means to assist us to share with us these valuable resources and we as a ministry and as a people are eternally grateful for this assistance and this friendship that exists between Grenada and Venezuela between the people of Grenada and the people of Venezuela between the government of Grenada and the government of Venezuela thank you the donation included rapid test kits and SARS-CoV-2 antibody test kits. Five things you need to know about self-isolation. Stay home. If you are told to self-isolate, it means staying at home, not going to work, school, or other public places, and you should not have any visitors. Separate yourself. If you live with others, then you need to stay in a well-ventilated bedroom with the door shut. If you have to share a bathroom, then use it after everyone else. Don't share towels and toiletries as this may put others at risk. Call ahead. If you develop symptoms such as a fever or a cough, then seek advice first by calling the Ministry of Health hotline at 538-4787 or 458-4787. Please do not show up at a medical center or hospital as this may put others at risk. Take care with waste. If you test positive, your waste should be double bagged and disposed of separately. Create a buddy system. If you live on your own, you can plan with friends and family to check in with each other and run essential errands if one becomes sick. Once sick, they should leave groceries on the doorstep. Why it's important. COVID-19 causes a mild illness for four out of five persons. Self-isolating will help protect the older generation and those who may have underlying health problems from getting infected. God bless you. 
and to each of you who will be uh, listening to this uh, uh, short word. And it's just a matter of uh, encouraging uh, you to stay focused and to stay strong in the midst of every situation. I want to speak today uh, concerning one of the signs that the of the coming of the Lord. And I read in the book of uh, Matthew chapter uh, 24, and when it talks about that you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, see that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences, and uh, famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. But these are just the beginning of sorrows. So we are, we are, we're told that these things are going to happen. All right. And um, um, plagues are one of those uh, times, things that we're going to be faced with leading up to the coming of Christ. And there will be an escalation. It's not that there have not been plagues in the past or um, pestilences in the past, but there will be an escalation. I want to use very briefly the word uh, plague because plague is another word uh, for pestilence. And what is a plague? It's a disastrous evil or affliction, a calamity, an epidemic, a disease causing high rate of mortality. And that's what we are seeing right now. Um, it's not just a matter, it's not an epidemic now, but it is a pandemic. Uh, but I want to give you very briefly in those three, in those words, P-L-A-Y, P-L-A-U-G-E. Uh, first of all, uh, when it comes to the P, it is to pray, plan, and prepare rather than panicking. All right, let me say that again. Pray, plan, and prepare rather than panicking. We are told in the passage that plagues and other bad things will come, but we are told not to panic. For Jesus said, see that ye be not troubled, for these things are the beginning of sorrows. And we cannot afford to panic, uh, get fearful, because that is exactly what uh, uh, the plague or the sickness is going to piggyback on when you are afraid, when you are, fear, when you are fearful. Uh, L, uh, letter L in plague is about love each other. And don't treat others as lepers. In order to make it through any epidemic, we will all have to have great care, um, but we will need uh, to use necessary precautions. But above all, we must love our fellow man. With love, we will be willing. We be willing to love each other, even if it costs our lives. And love is what is going to uh, cause us to come through this particular situation. A is for anointing, the anointing of God. We cannot just depend on our physical makeup and building up our immune system, but we also need to build our spiritual one um, and that's why we see in, in the in the word of god that it talks concerning that uh the same spirit that raised jesus from the dead if it dwells in us will quicken our mortal bodies then we have the letter g grace of god in the midst of diseases and sickness the grace of god the unmerited favor of god takes us through circumstances but that, that will normally uh, kill the average person Psalms 91 talks about that. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So stay in the presence of God. Amen. And then if you look at the word in Exodus 10, 22 to 23, it sees how God covered and protected his people even when they were in Egypt. God covered them. God protected them. The grace of God is also the strength of God and his supply. God can keep us in the midst of great stress. So don't stress yourself. That's important. Don't stress yourself out, but rest in the grace of God. And then there is the U in plague, P-L-A-U. Uh, it's for understanding. We need to get understanding, not misunderstanding. And don't go and try to get too much information in this season. Get the word of God in your heart because too much information will kill you, will have you petrified, will have you fearful. But stay in the Lord. Amen. And do what God called you to do. And then the last letter is E, and that's for everlasting life. God wants us to have everlasting life because uh, we all need to have that eternal life insurance policy taken out because with plagues and pestilences, we do not know which one of us, and let me say it again, we do not know which one of us will live or die. Not only are normal people dying, but even those in the forefront of the battle of, of this pandemic are dying. So may God help all of us to be physically, but also spiritually prepared 
even to the point that we not just have our life insurance and preparing for this life, but we also make sure and have our eternal life insurance uh, policy out. As I close, let's remember as we face this particular pandemic and difficult times that will come, let us pray, plan, and prepare. Let's love each other and don't treat each other as lepers. Don't just depend on your physical building up, but depend on the anointing of God. Not forgetting the grace of God and having good understanding. And finally, take out and maintain your eternal life policy for we just don't know what will happen. The question that you may be asking, how long will this last? I just want you to know, it is not how long this thing will last because none of us don't know. But what you know is that the grace of God will last. The love of God will last. And God will outlast this. I believe that this thing, just like a hurricane, is going to come and blow out. It may, it, as a hurricane, you know, it lasts for hours. This may last for a few months. But I want to encourage you, the grace of God will keep you. And don't panic. Don't worry. Don't become fearful. I know that is easy. Because there are many things that some of us are going through. But let God keep you and let the blessings of God rest upon your life. God bless you. Grenada Karakum Petit Mantani. And be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. God bless. Take me to the King. I don't have my chains. Take me to the King. My heart is torn in pieces. It's my offering. Take me to the key. All righty, folks, we have just about come to the end of tonight's edition of Good Night Grenada. However, it's not yet over because while you guys were watching all that stuff, John posted a little note here. He says, a simple mask test is if you can blow out a match with a mask on, it's no good. Well, Georgie Porgy thought we should put that to the test. So I went and got my mask. Here it is. Here it is. Okay. Now, am I wearing that properly? Yeah? Okay. Box of matches. Okay, so let's see now. Let me repeat. If you can blow out a match with the mask on, it's no good. So, here's the match. Did pretty darn good. So I guess... I do have a good mask. Yeah. Okay. I've only worn this. I haven't, I really haven't been going out. So uh, I've only worn this, I think, uh, maybe twice. Huh? But please, follow the instructions. And if you're going to be out running around, make absolutely sure that you wear a mask. All right. Now, quick break, and then we'll come back and wrap it up as we normally do.
good friend, uh, Ryan. Ryan is concerned about me creating a fire around here. He says here, uh, no fire now, George. No, I'm going to be careful. Don't want to burn this place down. It's all I got, all I got. And then there's, <laughs> I like this one. There's a note, there's a note from, uh, from John. After I did my test, <laughs> John, John, John. John says, it's not made in China then. Um, no, John, this one was not made in China. This, yeah, this one was made by my landlady upstairs, okay? Hi, John, 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 John. Yeah, it's a good mask, good mask. And it worked. My dear friends, parting, <laughs> parting word from Holy Scriptures. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 15, 16, and 17. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly profess his name, and do not forget to do good and to share with others. For with such sacrifices, God is pleased. Have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority because they keep watch over you as those who must account. Do this so that their work will be a joy, not a burden, for that would be of no benefit to you. Hebrews 13, verses 15, 16, and 17. You know, before I read that, I was thinking, yeah, I'm sure this is going to ruffle a few feathers out there because there are some people who just don't agree that you should have confidence in your leaders or submit to their authority. Yeah, I admit, sometimes very difficult to do so. But what you just heard from me it's not George Grant speaking. That was the word of God. You say you believe in God? Believe those words, even though you may find it very difficult to believe in those words. Huh. John says, uh, let's see, Ryan says, can't see your face. Uh, great program, George. Night, night. Stay safe. Stay safe and see you another day, George, says John. Okay, folks. Yeah, that's going to do it for us tonight. Hey, fun time as usual. Kind of low-key tonight, quiet, but nevertheless, trust that you learned something. God bless you, and we'll see you again tomorrow, 8 o'clock. <laughs>